Hello, Daniela uh, in Galilea. Uh, this is Dr. Choffey, and I'm making a little recording on how I made the posters. And as uh, I go along, I'll explain also a little review of the data, which you know already, but uh, I'm going to include the technical aspects of making a poster since we were kind of rushed at the last minute and essentially I ended up doing the posters for you. So what I have, uh, first of all, I have opened uh, three PowerPoints, okay? And one PowerPoint is uh, blank. The other PowerPoint has one of your posters, which I'm using just uh, Daniela's poster as an example. And uh, the third one is a poster that I have as a shell, all right? So let me start with this one then. Oh, okay, no. Um, let me tell you what else I have open. I have also the um, Excel uh, database, okay, the spreadsheet that has uh, all the data in it for our calculations. And that will be an active file, this uh, Excel. And of course, I also have the uh, internet on. I use uh, Chrome because I find that uh, Chrome is especially good with uh, graphics and fairly faithful in translating uh, graphics uh, from the internet to uh, PowerPoint, for example. Okay, so I use Chrome. All right, let's uh, go back here to the shell first. I have this uh, shell from previous uh, years of the SRI. There we go. So this is a PowerPoint uh, from last year and I use it as a shell. What's going on? Okay, there it is. Because the formatting is essentially the same and what's going to change is the content, all right? But the formatting is the same. And uh, down to the icons to be used for the logos for MDC and for STU and also the different categories within the poster and also the point, the letter point and style, that's all preset. So all I need to do is, for example, on this one, the first thing I do is I change the name because you can see here, this was a student from last year from the Wolfson campus, okay? And so um, this is a good practice for any document that you're working on or any uh, file. In other words, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or a Word document, as soon as you open the document, even when it's blank, the first thing you should do is go under File, Save As. Okay, so File, Save As. And then if you're going to dump it on the desktop, my suggestion is that you make a folder that is informative. So open a folder, you know how to do a folder. You uh, click on the, uh, in this window, click on the right, right click on the mouse and go down to new folder. Probably know this, all right, so there it is, new folder. And then leave it like that active and I, label my folders uh, always with capital letters. I just find it easier to read for an old man. And so you turn on your caps and you write right there in the blue. Oh, the blue went away. I mean, it was, the title was highlighted. Okay, so uh, you can type the title. Actually, this one is uh, poster making. So. You should try to make the title short and informative, one, two, three words, so that you can see it, these folders on your desktop, okay? And then you double click in there, and that opens, see the, the route here from the desktop? Now we're in this uh, folder called post poster making, 
and now dump your um, let's call this uh, experimental or um, experimental poster okay just give it a title and uh, save so you dump it into that folder there that way you already have you see the name comes up at the top here experimental poster so that means that this document is uh, saved in this place it has this title and is saved in the poster in the sorry the uh, folder that we uh, created on the desktop and then whenever you change something here periodically get used to hitting the little icon of the save button on the upper left just hit save and whatever you have made uh, new will be saved automatically to that uh, folder all right and to that file so get into the habit of saving often <laughs> just in case uh, power goes out or you make a mistake or whatever you have a safe copy of what you just did all right then starting from the top we're going to work from the top down so i click into the title okay i don't know if you can see the cursor there somewhere in the middle and then erase the title i raise the back first because i want to end up in the first letter so i do delete and then I go forward with backspace and I just want to go to the first letter. All right, and now this is the, oh, sorry, the, the title is going to be caps for words other than uh, prepositions. So, we're going to put uh, uh, my poster. Okay, see the title is in uh, just the first letter of each word is uh, caps, is uh, in uppercase. Then uh, you're going to go to the second line and change the name instead of Roxana Ramirez. Now this poster is the right. What do I have? I already have the one superscript as Miami Dade College, and then I just have to change the campus here to Kendall. Probably very bored by now because you probably know all this very well. So Kendall campus, right? And the rest is uh, done. So you see, by using a shell, all you need to do is put the new title and then the new names of the students and everything else is already pre-formatted. You got your logos on each side, etc. And then it's a question of going into the text. Of course, here is very tiny. So um, at the bottom right, you can expand, you can uh, make it bigger, right? There's a scale there, 20%, 30%, 40%, make it big so that you can see it and actually be able to read it. So I work, there are three columns. So they're just gonna work one column at a time. The introduction is already in place. What we're going to change is the actual text in here. Uh, so I just go uh, highlight all of this paragraph. Once I have it highlighted, then I can start typing away. Mm, right, uh, this is of the italics there because it had a scientific name. So the home tab. Oh, yeah, the other thing is uh, you can anchor your tabs. These are called 
tabs, of course you know that. And then what's underneath each tab, each tab, this is called the ribbon. The ribbon is all the commands that you have available. You can lock the ribbon with this little uh, icon over here or pin the ribbon and that holds it in place, okay? Of course, it gives you a little less uh, area on the screen, but still we'll work in section by section. So in the, the, the ribbon, and then you can go from tab to tab and it will give you the different tabs, okay? We'll work a lot on the home tab and then also on this format tab for the drawing tools. All right, so again here, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to get rid of the italics, see? So just click italics out. And um, this uh, poster is about uh, operation, Oops, sorry. COVID. All right, so you see, you're tapping away here. And then if you scroll down, I have some photos here, which I'm not gonna use. So what do I do? I just click onto the photo and you see how it becomes framed with this little, uh, with these lines and these bubbles or circles, all right? That means that that photo is now activated, has been activated and I just uh, delete. So delete the photo here uh, but also I am um, the other thing is I want to keep the figure uh, title all right so here where it says figure 2 stu etc I want to keep that what has happened here is that I had grouped I had grouped this text of uh, figure 2 the title of the figure I had grouped it with the photograph itself okay so you probably know this, but just in case, let me go over it. Go up to uh, these tabs here where it says format. So on picture tool, click into picture tool and it opens that ribbon. And over here you see where it says group toward the right, click on group. And the option that it gives you now is to ungroup. And look at the photograph and look at the title of figure two when I ungroup, you see, now the title has also become active, has been highlighted. And because essentially this figure has two parts, has two components. <coughs> it has the photograph itself of our pine forest. And then uh, layered on top, it has the label of uh, figure two. All right, the title. So I want to ungroup them. And once I ungroup them, then I can click, I can click on the photograph only, which is the one that I want to delete. And you can either use delete or backspace. And you see the photo is gone now, but I have the label for the figure. Okay, I have the label for the figure, the title. And so, and it's active and it's in the proper point, point of the, of the letter size and the letter style. So all I need to do now is go into that uh, title, go into the text, click anywhere inside the text. And again, I start erasing from the back. So I use delete and then backspace going forward. It's awkward. Backspace means uh, going forward, actually. All right. And you stop at figure two. Actually, this would be figure one. So you put a one dot and then space. And this, oh, uh, this is the first. Okay, now notice that the figures, the figure titles are also in the same format. Oh no, it's just, uh, give me a minute.
let me see, I forget if the title of the figure is also in a title style or is it in a uh, just a sentence style. Yeah, I have them here as title style and not sentence. So you see world map, both world is uh, uppercase and map is also uppercase. Here also table two, listing of population densities. So the nouns, verbs, adjectives, all those are um, capitalized, right? Uppercase, just like the title. Okay. So let's go back to this other right poster here. Okay, so that's the proper formatting there. Mm -hmm. And it's the right point. Okay, so now you have the title already set, ready to be uh, used where you need it below the figure. <coughs> you can also bring the, this margin in so that it's just the size of the title itself, just details. All right, and then what we need here is, uh, because this figure one is about the, the population of the world or the world, uh, the world nations, you go into the internet down here to Google and just punch in uh, world map. Okay, I'm sure you know all the stuff already, but just in case, I'm going through it in detail. Punch into Google World Map, and then you see these little tabs here, these little tabs, you can go to images. And in images, you can select whatever image you want to use. Essentially, you would uh, right click on top of the photograph. Okay. Any of these, you can just uh, right click and uh, copy and paste. So we'll copy image and then back to the uh, point here. And then here, based. Then you have to bring it down top. Sometimes where the map lands is, uh, where the figure lands, it's hard to tell. So you have to hunt for it. Typically it's on the upper left. I guess it's still downloading. Oh, there it is. Wow. gave me a blank, so I guess that photo was not available. Okay, anyway, you have to go through the internet and see what photos are available for use, okay, for educational use and what photos are not available. Obviously, this first one was not available, so you just need to hunt around to see what photos are available. Okay, so this one on the poster, uh, Daniela's poster. Trying to make this small, it's a little slow. Let 
Yeah, there's so much data that it takes a while for it to load up and down. Maybe 20%. Right, so that's the photograph there. Okay, see, that's the photograph from the internet, and the title is underneath. So you start writing the text and then the photos, the graphs. I also want to say that for posters, scientific posters, we only have two options for the graphics, whatever is not text. There are two options. It's either a figure or a table, all right? And so anything that is not a table, anything that doesn't look like a table with rows and columns, then it's a figure. Even if it's a graph, it's a figure, okay? So the title for uh, the figure has to start with figure one, and then that one is anchored in the text. For example, here, figure one, okay? If it's not a figure, then it's a table, and a table has to have rows and columns, could have a lot or a few, but that's what a table is. Including, for example, the stat crunch. Actually, the stat crunch is uh, a table, okay? Okay, and I wanted to point out then, because graphs are not tables, then graphs are figures. Plots and graphs, they're figures. Okay, then uh, the purpose also describes what the study is. You can read that in your, in your poster. Essentially, the first column here, the first section of the poster is the same for uh, both of you with regards to um, describing the introduction and the general purpose of the study. All right, you have somewhat different uh, uh, figures here, but essentially it's uh, just uh, highlighting how uh, COVID is spread or any pandemic, any epidemic, uh, uh, flu, anything, any illness, disease that is spread by person-to-person -person contact. There are many of these uh, images in the internet, on the internet that you can use. Okay, we'll go to the second one. Now, this is a little more detail. The second column or the second section, you get basically materials and methods. And then in the third section, you get results, discussion, conclusion, and then references and acknowledgements, all right? So materials and methods is what you want to show basically the data. And this data, as you can see, was built in pieces, all right? And this is where uh, I can show you a few little tricks, if you will. All right, so let's go to the middle section here. There we go. All right, so again, the title is already pre-formatted, as you can see, right? Okay. It's pre-formatted. And then you write in the text, whatever text is, which we had worked out uh, previously. And now this figures, uh, sorry, table one and table two, it's all one table. But of course, this is very long because we have 230 countries here, 230 countries. So what I did is I just put about 10, the first 10 countries alphabetically, and then the last 10, more or less, okay? And I put three dots in between, meaning that this data continues, wraps around to get to the last countries here. And it's just to illustrate the uh, a sample. That's why I put sample inside the caption of the, of the title. Hmm? Alphabetical listing of nations of the world showing number of people and surface area. So you see these are the three categories. We got nations of the world we got population and we got area, right? And the area always has to have the, um, the units that are being used, which is kilometer square. 
All right, so it's a, it's a listing, it's just descriptive. The, the, the title is descriptive. Alphabetical listing of nations of the world, all nations of the world, okay? And uh, showing number of people and surface area, okay? And then I put in parentheses a sample because it's not the 230, it would be just too bulky to fit it in here. And if we were to fit the 230 in this small space, the point size would be um, super tiny and wouldn't be able to see it. So you notice that the point size of the letter more or less matches the point size of the, of the text. It's a little smaller, right? It's closer to the size of the, uh, of the title, uh, but it's visible, it's visible. All right, so how did I make these little tables here? These two little tables of the first and the last countries. Let me pause for a moment and I'll be right back to uh, address that. Give me a minute, please. Okay, I'm back. So what I want to say is that uh, when you take a course in the Microsoft Office, you will learn a lot, hopefully, about uh, these three basic programs. Uh, that are a very versatile word for writing documents and abstracts and scientific papers and so forth. And then um, Excel for uh, accumulating data and uh, um, doing arithmetic and mathematical calculations and ranking and so forth. And then the PowerPoint itself for making presentations for uh, designing posters, etc. So these three programs um, are very useful. Each one covers a different aspect of uh, sci of uh, of uh, presentations or documents, etc. And they can uh, interact with each other. You can go from one platform to the other. All right. So let me go over here to our uh, poster. Where's our poster? There we go. Okay, I'm explaining how to make these uh, little tables here. You probably again know all this, but just in case I go, here is the Excel spreadsheet. Oops. Just wanna get this uh, graph out of the way. Go to the very top. All right, you notice that there is a ranking here. Ranking meaning that the data is uh, listed in some kind of order. And you notice that it's not ranked by uh, alphabetically by nation because Monaco is uh, not the first, uh, you know, it's Aruba, for example, that has an A and so forth. Uh, Vatican should be one of the last with a V, etc. So this is not, the nations are not ranked alphabetically. The populations are not ranked by size either because we see that these numbers vary back and forth. Uh, so there's no ranking here of, this, of the population. The same can be said with the area. The area goes back and forth from two kilometers square to 700 to 1,000, 1,100 to six, etc. So these are not ranked either. Finally, when we get to column D, population density, we had ranked it according to population density, okay? Because this is going to correspond to our plots, to the graphs that we made. In fact, it's this one, the full density distribution plot, this one here. When you click on the plot, then it highlights the data from which the plot was made, uh, okay? So, uh, but in this uh, first figure here, in the first table, what we want is the first 10 countries and then the last 10 countries. So we need to re-rank our data according to the nation. Okay, so watch this. I go to the bottom of our data, to the last entry there, Antarctica, all right? And with my mouse, I left click into Antarctica and then holding the left click, I scan up. I highlight that whole column except for the title because I don't want to rank the title nation. I don't want the word nation into the ranking, okay? So that's why I start from the bottom 
and coming up, just holding that left click up to the first nation there and then release. Now, you're gonna do a ranking. So let's open the ribbon in home. It's under home, you, you can pin the ribbon here, okay? And it's going to be this one here, sort, sort and filter, all right? So in sort, you see A to Z, click into sort and it will give you several options. You wanna sort precisely alphabetically from A to Z and not backwards, not from Z to A, all right? So we want A to Z, click there. And now it's going to give you this little window and ask you, if you want to expand the selection, this is crucial, this is very important. Yes, you want to expand the selection. Expanding the selection means that each name, each country is gonna be anchored to its data. So for example, for Tibet, it's going to be 3 million people and 1.2 million uh, square kilometers, you see? In fact, it's going to uh, anchor the nation with all of the other data that is on the same row, on the same row, not column, but row. So everything that is in the row of Tibet, right? That's going to be anchored with it. And so when the program, uh, when Excel uh, sorts this, uh, these stations from A to Z, each nation will carry its own data to the new place. And that's very important because if you don't anchor, if you don't expand the selection, then you're going to lose the corresponding values for each nation and it will be essentially scrambled because the only thing that it will do, you see, continue with current selection only. If, if you don't leave it, the default is to expand, all right? But if you go to continue with current selection only, it means that it will only sort or rank the column that is highlighted, in this case, the nation, and will, um, uh, discombobulated, it will disconnect it. Each country will then be disconnected to its uh, data because the other columns, B, C, D, E, etc., are going to stay just as they are. They're not going to rank, they're not going to sort together with the nation, you see, so that the data will be scrambled into a disaster and you would have to throw that out. <laughs> so make sure that you click here to expand unless you only want to rank or sort one column. It depends on what kind of data you're dealing with, okay? All right, so when the columns are independent of each other, you can do that ranking, uh, continue with the current selection only. But otherwise, if the data is linked, if the columns are linked, then you need to expand the selection. And then sort here, just click into sort, and there it is, you see, it's so fast, you, can, you can't really see it happening, but you see the results. So Zimbabwe, Zambia, Yemen, you see we're at the bottom of the sorting. And so it's got the countries that are uh, at the bottom of the alphabet, if you wish, uh, at the end of the alphabet with its proper data. So these 14 million people do belong to Zimbabwe. All right, and the 386,000 square kilometers do belong to Zimbabwe, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so uh, then the next thing is to collect or highlight only 10. And that's the other thing I just took, uh, let's say from Afghanistan to Argentina here, I'm highlighting these, all right? So uh, left click into the first one and scan down, drag down and hold, and then go across and highlight also population and area with the titles. Now you notice that the title is not, uh, so actually I need to come up one. I need to click here and then down because I want the titles to appear. All right, there, okay. And so once uh, I have highlighted the data that I'm going to transport into 
the PowerPoint, release the, the click, and then right click in the highlighted area, right click, and it gives you this little menu, copy. So left click into copy. And now the memory of the, the active memory of the computer has that in its uh, bank, memory bank. Now you go to the PowerPoint down here. And uh, where's the poster? Okay, so uh, I'm using this uh, as an example, this new poster, right? Mm, but here, let's get rid of these three photographs. I just click in each photograph. I still have that little table uh, in the memory of the computer, all right? I can still left click, highlight the photo and delete. Delete and delete. And then I can right click and dump it. You have these several different options. Uh, you can see how it looks by just mousing over it. I use uh, the third option I thought was the best, this one that is in parentheses, okay, in brackets. It says embed. All right, so I click into that one. And there it is. Let's make the poster a little bigger. Okay, so here's the table. But you see the table is kind of small. So you can uh, enlarge the table by clicking into it. And it's activated on the corners. You see the bubbles, the circles. You grab one corner and left click and hold and drag. You see how it will open, expand the table for you. And it has a lot of resolution. Essentially, it's not fuzzy. You can still see the letters well, all right? So if you drag from the corners, you will expand it proportionally. The table will expand proportionally if you drag from the corners. If you push in and out on the side bubbles, on the side circles, then it will compress it, right? Or expand it, but it, it may distort the, the image. And the same for top and bottom. This will squeeze it down, okay? And squeeze it up. So you don't want to use those. You want to use the corner for any table or typically a photo also so that the proportions are kept. Okay. All right. What else do we have? And I did that for the two tables, the, or the, the two segments of the table, the first 10 uh, countries and the last 10 countries. So they're two separate independent uh, little tables really. You see, one is there, see, and then the other one is here. And for the three dots, you have several options. Uh, one option is to open a text uh, box. Again, up in home, for example, you get text, uh, text box, where's the text box? Hmm. I guess insert on, in the tab of insert. There you have a text box. Here it is, text box. Okay, text box. So you can open one of these or simply because this is part of the same writing. Okay, it's just a, a return space here in between the, the writings. You can also just go into that line it's coming from the margin on the left, going there by giving space bars, okay, space bars. And then you can put uh, three dots, but the three dots are very small because they're the same point as this, as the text. So you can highlight the three dots, just highlight the three dots and increase the point size. So you have these two this little, this little menu that appears here, this little window, these letters up and down. You can just click on the bigger letter A and it just increases in point size. You can see the point on Arial, 32, 36, 40. You see the point size is increasing 
and the dots are getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so you can make them uh, so that it's something a little more visible, proportionate, etc. All right, what else do we have on the poster? Then there's some text, and uh, I did essentially the same little trick for population density. But notice now I have nation and density next to each other. So I need to rearrange the columns in Excel. So let's go back to Excel for a moment. Here we are in Excel. Now, for the first table, I had used nation, population, and area. But for the second table, I want nation and population density, number one, number and next to each other. So uh, I'll make these, and I'll show you how to shuffle these around. Uh, that's number one. Number two, also, it's ranked by population density now. But, excuse me. <clears throat> this little table, the second table, you see that the population densities are ranked or sorted by the highest density going all the way down to the lowest density. No one living in Antarctica on a regular basis or Greenland or the Falkland Islands, etc. So we can go back to Excel and essentially what we want is we want population density to be next to nation. So very easy, again, you go up to where the letter is on the column and click on the letter, and that highlights the whole column, highlights the whole column. Then anywhere in the shade, right click and cut, and then click again where you want to insert the table insert the column. So in this case, we want it inserted here. We want to push, shove population and area to the right, and we want to put density here. So again, um, click on the top of the column to highlight the whole column, and then right click and insert cut cells. You see, insert cut cell here, insert, and there it is. It's now inserted, okay? You can also narrow it down a little bit by grabbing on the, in between the two columns. You can grab there where the arrows are and uh, holding down the mouse, you can go to the, make it larger. Sorry, wider or more narrow, right? So the title is proportion there in the middle. All right, then you have to rank the same way, rank the, the density. So go to the bottom of the data and grab, go into the last cell and holding your left click uh, down, go up all the way across uh, to the very top, okay. Coming up, now you want to exclude the title, exclude the title, and then again, sort. And now you want to sort largest to smallest, you see, so it's the second option, sort largest to smallest. In other words, the largest density first. Click into that. Again, it asks you the same window, expand the selection. Yes, obviously expand, otherwise you're going to uh, disconnect the data from its nation and then sort. There it is. The bottom one. See, the lower values are at the bottom of the second column, which is density. And of course, the top values, the highest densities are at the top. See, and these are the 11 countries that have a density above 1,000. Okay, so then it's just a question of. Highlighting those, and right click, copy, and then go over to your PowerPoint. And paste. So right click, 
paste. Again, for these uh, tables, I'm using the embed uh, feature. There it is. And make a little bigger, grab from a, a corner, any corner you can expand. Okay. All right, uh, what else? Uh, moving forward on the poster. Here is the actual poster. Okay. Oh yes, the graphs. Okay. So for the graph, more. Okay, the graph again is worked out in Excel. So go back to your Excel sheet and you have the uh, data that was plotted already for the full density distribution. And now there's some formatting that we need to do in the graph we need to format it here while it's still in, a, in Excel, and then we're going to import it into the PowerPoint, but we need to format it first here in the, uh, in the Excel format, okay? Because this is the active site, if you will, the active window that allows us to do all the manipulation that we need to do with regards to uh, titles and uh, uh, axis, etc. The labels on the axis and all that. Let's see. Okay, unfortunately it's getting uh, very late for me so I need to stop now and uh, I'll, I'll make this will be one video and send it to you and then tomorrow I will continue uh, recording the second half of the video, if you will, on how to format these graphs and also the stat crunch, which is basically, it's uh, almost just a cut and paste for the stat crunch, all right? But we need to take a screenshot and so forth. So I'm gonna stop here now and then uh, turn this into YouTube and send it to you and tomorrow I'll continue with the second half of the recording. All right, thank you very much. Good night.